everyone, Amanda here. I am just coming to share my journal making process. Um, quite a few of my followers and subscribers and friends have asked me to literally share my thought processes on making journals. Um, so I'm going to do a few um, quick videos, or fairly quick, just sharing basically from the start to the end of my journals. Um, so I'm not going to film the whole of the journal but I'm going to um, do it in stages and show you as I'm going and as the journal progresses. I'm not an expert, I'm quite new to it myself but I don't mind sharing as I go, sharing my experiences with you and then you can follow along and um, uh, um, you know start your journal making as well. Now I did find when I first began I was doing a lot of watching as we always do when we're crafters a lot of watching and not a lot of doing and so my first piece of advice is to stop watching everybody and actually do it <laughs> just have a go and there's no um, you don't need to wait until you've got everything sorted and everything perfect and that you know exactly what you're doing just get cracking basically and get started and just make something and your first journal might not be perfect there's no such thing as perfect in crafting there's no right or wrong just get started just make a start um, because you will very much however much you watch other people on YouTube you'll find your own way and you'll take their ideas um, but you'll incorporate it into your own style so my first you know the first step is stop watching and start making um, you know if you decide you want to use digital prints find somebody who you love find a one kit that you love and concentrate on that I'm using one from Artemis and this is a sewing theme one um, and I've had this in my on my computer for quite a while and I thought right I'm going to just get on with it so I printed out one of everything to start with all right and then what I find is and um, sometimes I'll find an image that I really like so I might go back and print a couple extras but to start with I just print one of everything um, and then I kind of give myself an idea of how many pages I want to have in my journal um, now I just when uh, if you knew one sheet of paper like that that's an A4 so I've printed this out I've trimmed the borders off it started as an A4 and then it will fold in half like that okay so one sheet makes four pages all right so even if you only have 10 sheets that's 40 pages so you can do your journals as thin or as thick as you want okay so when you see someone in the go there's 150 pages in this journal just remember to divide that number by four that's actually how many sheets they've used all right so it can sound like it's overwhelming um hundreds of pages but it's always divisible by four so it's not as many as you think so then you decide if you want it quite decorative or if you want it plain Here's a little miniature journal that I'm in the process of making and it's going to be just for writing and I'm going to go to town on making little tags for it and I'm going to really decorate the cover but the actual pages are just going to stay plain. So I've just got a mixture of different pages, I've got book pages, I've got ledger paper, this is coffee dyed, that's a bit of vellum, um, you know, and that. Is it? It's all going to be plain and I'm just going to embellish with little tags and little bits here and there. If you're doing it one with the digi kit, you might print out full sheets. That is going to be two pages. Okay. So I pick out which ones I want and I just get myself a pile together. Here I've got some plain, I've got all sorts. And now what I do try to do is, let me just move all of those. I don't want all of these fancy pages too close together and what I will say is that you intermingle these as focal points and have plain papers in between because printing out and printing out and printing out and printing out will end up costing you a lot of money so you don't need to have every page with printed out stuff on so I might have a printed out and then I might do four pages one two Couple, so I've got a couple of coffee guide, I've got some lines, three, I've got some ledger paper for, and then I might tell myself, right, now I'll have another patterned or decorative or whatever, okay? 
and what I do is then I just get them all together or I might just have three and then have another decorative one and then I might have a paper bag one, two um, you know and just keep going like that until you've got yourself a little bit of a, a bundle of pages and then in between what I think is okay so here I'm going to have and this is a large envelope I'll have an envelope there that I've decorated okay and then over here I might do a um, tell myself I'm going to do a flip pocket a flip corner okay and I just start and plan it all right and then if you think oh it's not a bit not very decorative there okay so what I'll do is I'll make sure I add another page in there okay and that is it all right and then you just get it until you're happy with the very bare bones of it and then what I do is if I want to egg punch, edge punch, I beg your pardon, I'll do my edge punching. If I want to sew around the pages, I'll sew them. If I want to ink it, I'll ink it. If I want to round the corners, I'll do all of that first. And um, you'll, as I say, you'll find your own way, but that's how I do it. All right. Now, when you'll hear some people talking about signatures, and typically in a signature, um, you, you, I mean you can have as few or as many pages as you like in a signature, it's totally up to you. Some people like lots and lots of signatures so they all sit nice and neat next to each other um, and some people like to just do one signature with a great big bulk of pages all in one go and you know a nice soft cover that just wraps around it. It's totally and totally up to you. The average of a signature if you're doing more than one I would probably Probably say maybe about 10 pages so you might go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all right so we're going to do a book with lots of signatures so that's one signature okay and then I'd get another 10 and that would be another signature and another 10 might be another and you can have as few or as many as you like I quite like just having the one because I like the thick, bulky kind of look. I'm not really, um, at the moment, too bothered about whether it looks exactly like a book. I like it to look very handmade, very kind of rough and ready. That's the style I like. So that is your first stage, is to base, very basically layer up what, how you want your pages to be. Okay, and what I do is I will have on hand... I've got this box now that I have full of stuff that I coffee dyed and I've pre-done it all. So if I need some extra pages, I can just pull them out of there. All right, and what I'll do is before I start a journal, I'll go and I'll coffee dye a load of stuff all at once and we'll see how we go. And what I also have under my desk is quite a big stash of old books that I can take the pages out of such as the music pages or dictionary pages and these are things that can fill your journals um, you know inexpensively and, and more importantly quickly that doesn't need any decorating okay somebody can just write on that they can stick things on it they could put photos on it they can do what they want if you wanted to decorate it you could maybe put some gesso on it you could do what you want but that's a page done that's a page done. Okay, I don't really need to do a right lot else to it. So that is your first process is getting your layout. And then when you've got your layout, what you want to do is get a big clip, okay, and clip it together. All right? And that way you're going to keep the order of your pages. And then what I do is I will typically, doesn't matter if it's not all cut to size just yet, all right, because you might change your mind on some things, you might add lace to some things. So cut your pages um, last, <laughs> because once you've cut them, you can't make them bigger. But if they're bigger, you can make them smaller. All right. So just think about it before you start cutting everything all nice and neatly to one um, uniform size. And also, who says all the pages have got to be the same size? You don't need to be. You can have them all different. You know, this envelope's going to be a different size to this. This could be a different size to this. I might edge punch it. I might not. But once I've done, I will have a kind of a uniform kind of size. Okay, so I probably will trim them um, so that it's a uniform sort of size. But there really are no right or wrong um, answers. 
And what I also do, so I plan my layout and then as you've probably seen on a previous video, I cut out all the ephemera and I make, if I want some little booklets, I make those. If I want some little notebooks, I make those. And if I want a flip like I've made this, I'll do all of that first. Alright, rather than making it as I go, I'll just make sit for one day and make a whole heap and then these will somehow be added into my journal. Anything that's not used can be used somewhere else, so you, it's fine. Um, and so that is the, the process for now. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go away now and I'm going to properly plan the layout of this journal and I might go and um, trim and add lace or sew around the edges or whatever I'm going to do and then I'll come back um, when I've got the kind of base, base layout sorted and I'll show you how I decorate because, you know, with your... With, with When I do mine, when I've got the digital images, I'll pretty much leave it like that. I might add a little tuck spot or something, but I like to show those. But on the planar ones, you might want to leave some for just writing on, and some you might want to customise yourself and decorate, or add tucks or add flips. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to um, show, show you me, me maybe doing one of the planar pages. Alright, so this is the start. <laughs> so perhaps you can follow along with me go and pick a journal um, design that you want to do if you've got some images print some out get them cut out get your little ephemeras made um, there's loads of videos out there and we'll make this journal together and we'll have some fun it might be spaced out over you know next week and the week after because uh, I do have a new job now so I don't have as much time to craft but I promised people that I would do it and so I will and I'll also show you maybe the processes of um, decorating a, a couple of envelopes and things like that although I will say there are loads and loads of videos out there you know check out Yvonne Preston check out Artemis because that is where I get a lot of my ideas and then I will I go from there and adapt them to suit myself so in the meantime go and, and watch those ladies do some homework get making some little booklets and uh, we'll get this journal filled and finished in no time see you soon bye